are back at it again. This is your most important NASCAR betting stop of the day. This is the Money Stop. He's Cole Cusimano. I'm Steven Cusimano, and we are presented by Sharp Link Gaming and Kicking the Tires. How about AJ Allmendinger, the Dinger, playing spoiler back in victory lane at the Roval. We are down to the round of eight in the playoffs, Cole, and headed to Vegas this week. In fact, you will be there. So this is a great thing because we get this every once in a while. We're lucky enough that you're able to travel to some of these races. And uh, first, we'll just start by kind of rehashing what we saw at the Roval a little bit, what we did like, what we didn't like, and then uh, we'll, we'll get into Vegas in a little bit too. Yeah, I mean, it was great to see Almondinger back in victory lane. I mean, who doesn't love seeing someone that animated and emotional um, win a race? And it just goes to show you how difficult it is to win a race at this level in NASCAR. So uh, just can't say enough great things about AJ. As far as the race itself, I, I think we did another phenomenal job. William Byron came out of nowhere and finished runner-up in this race. My pick for the win. And um, it broke our streak of, of picking back-to-back -back winners, but at the same time, we still got second place. And outside of that, our analysis was also spot on. Um, just been absolutely killing it these final few races of the season. And um, I'm very excited to get to, to Vegas here. But overall, on the Roval, I think it's uh, it's a worthy race to have in the playoffs. I think it really accentuates what it means to be um, a champion, if not at least someone worthy of contending for the round of eight. So that's nice, but I think the on-track product is a bit lacking, as it has been all year, I feel like, in my opinion, at the road courses. So um, not the most compelling thing visually, but I think I really appreciate the the strategies and all that went into this race and, and all the eight drivers that, that advanced and what they had to do. So um, overall, solid time. Uh, we did a great job on our end. And looking ahead to Vegas, I'm so pumped to get back out there. It's going to be a pretty light week on, on my end. Um, just got some Xfinity racing, some cup racing, but both kick off the round of eight. And just, again, speaking on our success overall at the money stop over the past three weeks specifically, uh, I'm even more pumped to get to Vegas because did another really, really deep dive for this episode. And I think uh, we're going to probably go another four for four here and picking top two drivers yeah these drivers are uh certainly rounding into playoff form the championship four drivers are starting to separate themselves i feel like we are also kind of in playoff form right now with the way we've predicted these last three races um as i mentioned aj allmendinger the winner your pick to win william byron the runner-up kyle bush in third despite being eliminated after the round of 12 ty gibbs with a very strong day wound up fourth joey logano in fifth Tyler Reddick with a strong day in sixth. Chris Buescher into the round of eight, finished seventh. Alex Bowman, who was one of our sleepers, wound up in eighth. Chase Elliott, another guy we liked, finished ninth. And then Ross Chastain, who was my sleeper for the win, rounded out the top ten. So putting a, a capper on all things Roval, again, we've done a nice job these past few weeks, Cole, especially considering you, you think about the Roval and Talladega, two of the more traditionally unpredictable tracks, especially in the playoffs, and, and we've kind of... We kind of had our own form of some controlled chaos, if you will, and I think we did a really nice job forecasting what we might see. And, and as we turn the page to Vegas, Cole, we're going to get into some numbers ahead of you actually making it to Vegas, and then we'll discuss over the weekend kind of what you observe in practice. Uh, that was something that obviously paid off when you most recently hit the track at Kansas, and, and obviously we saw how that ended up playing out for us. But as we kick it into our Take It to Bank segment, Cole, um, pre-qualifying odds per BetMGM. We're going to start with the race favorite. That is Kyle Larson at plus 500 for the win. And then you've got co-favorites at the second highest odds, Denny Hamlin and William Byron, both plus 600. Those are for sure the top three playoff drivers so far. But then Martin Truex Jr. also kind of waiting in the wings in these playoffs is plus 800. And then Tyler Reddick is plus 900. So Definitely a week, Cole, as we start the round of eight, where Vegas is predicting a strong week for the drivers that are consistent in that round of eight. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you look at this top five, and it's for sure uh, the cream of the crop collectively uh, for the playoffs, I would say, uh, in reference to Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, William Byron, and Tyler Reddick. Uh, but Martin Truex Jr. has just been um, pretty notably awful <laughs> all throughout the postseason so far. And also speaking on Kyle Larson, looking at their averages from this past round, they both held up the back end of the uh, the round of eight drivers. 19.6 average for Kyle Larson and an 18.3 average for Martin Truex Jr. So two drivers who definitely need to kick it into high gear in order to make it into Phoenix. And also even Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick had a 15.6 average, but uh, we won't get too deep into those stats just because 
it was a really wild round of 12. But um, regardless, drivers like Truex and uh, Tyler Reddick will have to kick it into high gear, go into Vegas. And I think they definitely will um, just seeing how their mile and a half program has been this year, as well as their Vegas resumes as a whole. Well, obviously the MVP of the round of 12 was none other than William Byron, who finished first, second, and second. So he had an average finish of 1.7 in the round of 12. And uh, definitely for William Byron, he has been the driver that has had the, the two best rounds to start this playoffs, I think, along with Denny Hamlin. But obviously, Denny didn't have the best race uh, most recently at the Roval. But kicking into this favorites category, Cole, how do you not start with William Byron, despite the fact that he is just behind Kyle Larson in terms of the Vegas odds? Won at Vegas earlier this year, led the most laps, and swept both stages. So in a year where Willie B has six wins, I feel like the talk about a lot of the more recent wins has been that he wasn't the fastest car, they didn't have the best race, but they were there when it ended, and they pounced when they needed to. This was not one of those cases. He absolutely dominated at Vegas early in the year, and has top tens in four out of the five mile-and-a-half races this year, with the most laps led, 283 and a 4.4 average finish, which is tops in the sport. And I said it the last time we went to a mile-and-a-half track, Cole. It was Texas. No one was talking about William Byron because he didn't have the strongest round of 16. But, again, we're going to mile-and-a-half tracks. I've been saying it every single one, really, the second half of the season. William Byron's the first driver I think of, and that is why. Talk about the numbers. Most laps led. Best average finish. Won at Vegas earlier this year. Uh, he's valued at 10600 in Daily Fantasy, which is the third highest price driver behind Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin. I think it is well, well worth the money. I'm honestly a little surprised that, especially after the round he had, William Byron is not the favorite this week. But looking at some other favorites, Cole, that it might be a little bit cheaper, our cheapest favorite pick of the week is, as you mentioned, Tyler Reddick, who has finished sixth twice at this track, does have a 16th place average finish in seven Vegas starts in his cup career. And on mile-and-a-half tracks this year, a little bit more encouraging because he's got the one win, three top tens, and an 11th place average finish. However, he's also the only driver to have led laps in all five mile-and-a-half tracks this year. So Tyler Reddick, a cheaper name in the favorites category, definitely a guy that we've got our eyes on. But I, I really feel that William Byron is as sure of a bet as sure gets this week. All right, very nice. You went with the number one driver going into Las Vegas. I'm going to go with the number two driver going into Las Vegas. That's going to be Kyle Larson, who might be the favorite going in at plus 500 and the most expensive driver at $11,000. But I think he is both literally and figuratively the second best option going into this race. He finished runner up in both stages earlier this year, led the second most laps and finished second to both uh, William Byron. So a uh, really good pick for Vegas. He has one win here back in 2021, sort of his coming back party from the uh, the year-long suspension in 2020, but also has four runner-ups in total at Las Vegas, nearly 300 laps led between his last five starts. And as far as the mile-and-a-half program is concerned for Kyle Larson, three top fives, two runner-ups, and the second most laps led to William Byron at 248. And between four of five mile-and-a-half starts this year, he has a 13.8 average finish. So not the best when we're talking results, but also a lot of those kind of got taken away by... Um, incidents on track with Ross Chastain or Denny Hamlin or just mishaps here and there. But nonetheless, I think Kyle Larson is a uh, should be a heavy favorite going into this one. You also factor in the, the points that uh, he did his Indy 500 orientation day today on Thursday, October 12th. He also won the high limit championship earlier this week and also just making the round of eight. I think there's a lot of positive momentum on Kyle Larson's side. We've seen that when he's winning and when things are going well for this driver, uh, things translate well into Sunday. So I think Kyle Larson's a really good uh, runner-up pick for for William Byron going into this weekend. Next up, we'll go right down the odds list to Denny Hamlin at plus 600 for the race win, and then right below Kyle Larson and DFS at $10,800. He also has one win at Las Vegas coming back in 2021. Finished 11th there this spring and has laps led in his last six starts at the 1.5-mile track with 369 led their total, which is the third most in the series currently also third most laps led at mile and a half tracks this year between four of five starts and has the third best average finish at 10.8 so whereas kyle larson was number two denny hamlin's definitely number three both to william byron number one and um i think uh this is a really solid favorites category i think our winner will definitely come from this bracket 
And if I had to put my money on it, I would be hard pressed to find somebody other than Kyle Larson or William Byron in victory lane this weekend. Also, um, Hendrick Motorsports has won two of the races under this uh, next gen format at Vegas. Well, that's the next thing I was going to mention as we kick it to our sleepers category. Why don't we lead this off with another Hendrick Chevy, and that is Chase Elliott, who I think, correct me if I'm wrong, this might be his first appearance in the sleepers category this year. He's usually been a favorite, especially early in the year, but obviously this late into the season without a win, uh, coming back from the injury midseason, obviously not in the playoffs. He's been relegated to a guy that is a sleeper now because he has not won a race in 2023. But as you mentioned, the Hendrick Chevys should not be slept on at Vegas this week. Chase is the only driver outside of William Byron that had a top 10 finish uh, average inside the round of 12. He averaged a ninth place finish. So for, for Chase Elliott, again, not in the playoffs, but I feel like that stretch of consistency maybe went a little bit under the radar. Uh, best finish at Vegas came two years ago with a second place finish. Finished 21st there in the spring, which obviously is an outlier uh, and has an 18.1 average finish at this track in almost 200 laps led in 12 starts there. He's also led laps in three mile and a half starts this season with two top 10. So Chase is a driver that definitely is peaking into form in a kind of under the radar. It's kind of weird to say that for the most popular driver in the sport, but I think that just with all the other storylines circulating in the garage with the round of eight beginning and other drivers that are hotter than Chase, it just kind of has the feel of, of, again, there's four races to go in the season now, kind of just has the feel for Chase Elliott that a win, if it's going to come, it's it's going to come soon because he's finally starting to round into form. Uh, plus 1,600 for the win is very solid value, and 9,200 in Daily Fantasy is also very solid value for a driver and team in Hendrick Motorsports that has, again, looked really good in the next-gen package at Vegas. Looking at our first Ford mention of the day, that is Ryan Blaney. Talk about another driver that's peaking at the perfect time. How about Blaney? Because he's had such an inconsistent season, plus 1400 for the win this week and 9600 in Daily Fantasy. So he's actually more expensive than Chase Elliott. And why wouldn't he be, right? He's in the round of eight. I got the win earlier in the round of 12 to advance into the round of eight. And uh, if you want to see more of that from Ryan Blaney, you just might get it at Vegas because he's got a best finish of fifth here, but he's done that five different times. 12.4 average finish in 14 starts at Vegas, which is really solid. And in the round of 12, had an average finish of 13.7, which doesn't light up the stat sheet, but it's the fourth best in the sport. So he's getting hot at the perfect time. Only top 10 on a mile and a half track this year was his win at Charlotte. So I think you, you look at the season Ryan Blaney has had, the wins at of course, Talladega, and then Charlotte, if you're looking at tracks that cater to his skill set, it's these high-speed tracks, of course. When you think of him, when we go to the super speedways like Daytona, Talladega, but certainly you go to a place like Vegas, and Ryan Blaney at a high-speed track is going to be one of the first guys you think of, and just kind of riding the momentum here. He's been really strong in that round of 12, and you know that he's very motivated to get back into the championship four. So between those two Best friends off the track, not so much on it. Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. It's a very, very solid sleepers category, along with what you have here. Absolutely. Two drivers speaking into form at the right time, uh, albeit at the end of the season. But for both, uh, Chase Elliott could make a run at the Owners' Championship. And Ryan Blaney, of course, has, has a chance to punch his ticket into the Championship for Phoenix, which, as we've seen time and time again, he performs so well there. So should he get there, he will be a threat. But we go to a mile and a half track. we got to talk uh, 23-11. We mentioned Tyler Reddick, but... Bubba Wallace, I know he didn't advance into the round of eight, but I was so impressed with how he ran at the Roval and how he held himself after the race even more impressively. Just, again, such a positive headspace. Um, he it really acknowledged the entire team and their entire efforts the entire season, his growth and, and where, they, where they're at right now, where they're going to be at the end of the season. So I think that that's a team that, even though they're out of the playoffs uh, in, in this round of eight, that they're going to be ones to watch for sure, going to Las Vegas. I mean, he finished a career-best fourth here in the spring. And I know we talked about Kyle Larson being the best driver on the mile and a half this year next to William Byron. That was kind of factoring in Vegas and the mile and a half this year. But statistically on the mile and a half, Bubba Wallace has been the second best by far with a 9.4 average finish. Top 10s in every start outside of Kansas. And the only drivers that can say that are ironically both him and William Byron, who didn't finish top 10 at the same race in Kansas. So um, I, I think you also, you think back to Vegas, the last couple races, 
Uh, he had a really strong fall race last year, led 29 laps, uh, took himself out in that Kyle Larson incident early on, but had the speed obviously earlier in the spring. And just coupling that with his mile and a half program in 2023, there is no reason to believe that Bubba Wallace cannot go out there and win this race. I think it would be really cool to see him go out there and, and play spoiler for a second week in the Cup Series with Al- Almondinger and him back to back. And I, I think it's uh, his values this week are just absolutely absurd. I think Vegas is definitely taking into account that he had not make the next round of the driver playoffs. But these are, are both race winner and DFS uh, values that I am going to be heavily considering this weekend. Plus 2,000 for the win for a driver that finished fourth at this track earlier this year has been the second best statistically on these style tracks all season. That is uh, outstanding. And then his, his value for DFS at $8,600, right above that average remaining salary re- recommendation per driver, is is really, really good. I'm going to call that a lock. Keeping it in the Toyota camp, I'm going to shift to a guy that you've been talking about the last couple weeks and one that I'm going to talk about a little bit here, but not beat the horse to death on because you can only talk so much about one guy. But Christopher Bell, he has just done so well in these playoffs, we, we know it is up and down season so far, but once that round of 16 began, he really kicked it into high gear. We're fully expecting him to win a race before the championship four, and that all could very well happen at Las Vegas. Uh, he finished a career best fifth here in the spring. And although he does have a 19.6 average and seven starts there in the cup series, he was the second most consistent driver in the round of 12 with an 11th place average finish. So definitely peaking into form at the right time, like the guys you mentioned, Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. But he's also uh, finished top 10 and and led laps in three of five mile and a half starts this season with the best finish of fourth, which came in the most recent mile and a half race at Texas and a 15.4 average finish, which is among the top five drivers uh, in in the round of eight. So I think um, all four very worthy drivers are considering uh, for sleepers in this race. But if we're talking values and just overall performance, um, Bubba Wallace should be a lock. Yeah, we do the value pick separately, but every once in a while, you get a really good value or two in the sleepers category, and that is certainly what you have there for Bubba Wallace. I'll be honest, I didn't entirely notice that the numbers were that good in terms of being second best behind only William Byron with that average finish at mile and a half tracks this year. That is very impressive, and that is, I don't think that's borderline lock territory. I think that is a lock for certain, especially in Daily Fantasy this week, depending on where he starts. But as we just finish up talking about those sleepers Seabell, Bubba, Chase Elliott Ryan Blaney, value picks to this week, I want to start with the fourth of the four Hendrick Motorsports drivers that we have mentioned in this episode that's Alex Bowman who was your sleeper for the win last week and wound up finishing 10th, Alex Bowman was also my sleeper for the win at Texas and he finished 12th, so he's been making us look pretty smart lately, we know it's not the season that Alex Bowman was hoping for, we know he would have obviously liked to have made it into the playoffs and not missed time during the middle of the season with injury. But for Alex Bowman, you look at the silver linings, you look at the mile and a half tracks this year, and specifically Vegas in the next-gen car era. Two starts there, a first, which was last year, and a third, which was this year. So for Alex Bowman, you look at success this year in a season that has not gone the way that 48 team probably would have liked. But for him at the mile and a half tracks this year, a 9.3 average finish in the four starts, lowest finish of 12th, best finish of third, which was at Vegas. So this is a very high floor, high ceiling pick for Alex Bowman. We talked all about how strong the Hendrick Motors have looked at Vegas since the next gen era has begun. And I could think, you know, based on what we've seen as a whole in the next gen era at Vegas, you can make the argument that Alex Bowman could be a favorite to win this race. Obviously, the results this year wouldn't indicate that, but that just tells me that at 7,700 in Daily Fantasy, Alex Bowman is a really, really good value. And then to a lesser degree, how about an extreme value here? Really good uh, bottom of the bargain scraper here at a value of 5,900. Justin Haley finished 13th, uh, 13th place average finish, I should say, at Vegas in the next gen car era. And to give you some perspective, that's the same average finish at Vegas in the last two years as Kyle Larson. So a career best finish of eighth at this track. It came this past spring, 15th place average finish at mile and a half tracks this year, including 13th at Texas in his last race there. So Justin Haley this year, very quietly putting together a very good intermediate track resume. And we've seen it in the next gen car at Vegas. You know, Justin Haley, 
a little bit flying under the radar. So for 5,900, if he's in your daily fantasy lineup, you can afford to put some really expensive drivers, the likes of a William Byron and maybe a Kyle Larson in your lineup, and you might still have room for a couple other pretty good drivers. And, and there's more value where that came from, right? Yeah, and those are two outstanding picks. I'm honestly astounded that Alex Bowman's uh, $7,700 uh, after his performance the last couple weeks and just overall at Vegas and uh, at the mile and a half this season. So both the border, I, I'll call Alex Bowman a lock, but Justin Haley as well as a borderline lock. You mentioned having to fit guys like Kyle Larson or, or William Byron in your lineup. That's the way to do it. If you're going to have any shot at doing that, it's it's got to be having a combination of those two guys in your lineup as your anchors. Uh, but another really good value, someone who's actually steeper, a steeper value than Justin Haley, is going to be a guy who had inked to a new contract for 2024 this week, Carson Hosevar, valued at $6,500. Um, I love what I've seen from this kid. I think that um, whenever he gets into a cup car, uh, a truck, there is always an opportunity that this kid is going to not either win the race or run very well in, in that sense in the cup series. And he's proven that time and time again, because between six cup starts, when he's finished the race, he's been very efficient with a best finish of 11th and a lowest finish of 20th. So as long as the car is on the track, not in the garage, he's going to get you a really solid baldy day. And uh, also worth noting, two of his six starts in the cup series have come in mile and a half tracks this year with a best finish of 16th coming at Texas a couple weeks ago. And uh, worth noting as well, he has a career best finish of seventh in the truck series at Vegas, uh, which happened this year, and laps led in his last three truck series starts there. So a track he knows how to get around. I just think that there's a lot of positive buzz around him um, with the, the new deal for next year in 2024 with Spire Motorsports, how he's performed in his limited opportunities with Legacy MC this season, and just the fact that he's also in the hunt for the uh, the truck championship on, on that side of things. So I love Carson Osevar. Not just this week, but I think almost every week remaining in the season that he's going to be in that 42 car, I love the idea of having Carson Josevar, um in the back of your lineup. And then someone else who's actually steeper than Carson Josevar and Justin Haley as well, um, I would assume for the equipment purposes at $6,900 is going to be Eric Amarola. And this is someone who I would call the best of what's left for DFS in terms of value. I think he's been consistent enough on the mile and a half tracks to where you can kind of have some faith in him. Um, 17.8 average doesn't really scream someone that you want to definitely consider for your lineups, but I think it's something that's not going to burn you in the long run. If you need to put somebody like that in your lineup, um, he has a best finish of 13th on mile and a half this year, worst finish of 25th. So nothing great, nothing too detrimental that, that would hurt you. And then in reference to Vegas with the next-gen car, a 13.3 average with the best finish of 6th and the lowest finish of 18th. So really, really solid. I think the the, the word here is just consistent. Um, maybe not like successfully consistent, but consistent nonetheless. And I think when we you tackle DFS and you, you find yourself in a bind, he's somebody that's kind of like old reliable. He's someone that's not going to finish lower than where he, where he qualified. And he's proven that actually uh, in 2023. First half of the season, not so much, but uh, but overall, and then specifically towards the second half of the season, if he has not qualified inside the top 10, he has finished above where he qualified. So I think that's something that you can definitely take some stock into and not someone that I'm going to toot my horn about and, you know, tell you to go out there and, and definitely put in your lineups. But I think if you need somebody that's in decent equipment and that has proven that he can get around these style of tracks and Las Vegas in a moderate sense. He's someone that you can trust in a little bit. Well, Cole, let's talk some prop bets here. First of all, big money bets, uh, not listed yet on BetMGM, but on DraftKings. Got some top five bets listed. Uh, the one I really, really like this week, obviously, is William Byron to finish in the top five. That is at minus 140. So if you put a bet of, uh, let's say, $50 on William Byron to finish in the top five, you're going to net $35, just, just more than $35 if he finishes in the top five. So again, not a crazy value there, but obviously this is the whole point of big money bet. It's one that has a much higher chance of happening. And you look at a guy that had an average finish, again, of less than two in the last round, and now he's going to one of his bread and butter types of tracks. I think that William Byron at minus 140 is a prop bet. I am 
extremely high on this week. Um, but then as you get closer towards the bottom of the pack, or I, I guess deeper in the field, uh, there starts to be a little bit more air area for profit. You look at a guy like Chase Elliott to finish in the top five. That's valued at plus 200. But I just wanted to start and kind of open up the floor by saying that I love William Byron at minus 140. Uh, I'm curious what ones kind of catch your eye, though, Cole. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think William Byron to finish top five is an automatic lock for this race. So I, I will definitely echo uh, your sentiments on that. For me, um, for, when I look at big money bets, I like looking at at even or above even for these types of bets. And for me, that begins with um, Tyler Reddick at plus 100 to finish top five. I think they've been really efficient, really consistent on these style tracks in 2023. Um, he's led laps in every single mile and a half race this season, which has not been done by anybody else. So that's also um, a vote of confidence for me and Tyler Reddick. Um, and then the one I like a lot is also Bubba Wallace at plus 250 to finish top five. I think that team, it, it should almost be a lot. They're going to finish top five. Want to see how they practice and qualify beforehand, but should they look really good, those odds will obviously uh, adjust not in your favor. So I think that's one that I would get in on as a definite big money bet before the odds adjust. And then also one more other out there is Alex Bowman to finish top 10 at plus 105. So right above even for someone who's finished first and third in this next gen car um, and is only two starts at Vegas. I think that's also pretty much an automatic lock. So uh, those would be my three bets, Tyler Reddick and Bubba Wallace top five, and then Alex Bowman to finish top 10. Yeah. I mean, you nailed it. Those were the same ones I had my eyes on, especially Alex Bowman plus 105 to be in the top 10 and Bubba Wallace uh, to finish in the top five. That is absolutely one of my favorite bets of the week at plus 250. Put 50 bucks on that, and you're going to come away with $125 if Bubba Wallace places in the top five. Uh, and he's, again, been one of the top drivers all year at mile and a half speedways. But that, that's our big money bets. You can feel a little bit more confident putting a bigger sum of money on those bets. If you were looking to parlay some head-to-head matchups, let's discuss these because... Again, they've got them on every website. You got some on DraftKings. You got some on the various different sports books. But we're going to preview the five that are on BetMGM head to head drivers that you may be able to parlay into some more money. Tyler Reddick versus Ryan Blaney, the first one. Kyle Larson versus Denny Hamlin, the second one. Then you've got Bubba Wallace versus Joey Logano. Chris Buescher versus Christopher Bell. And Martin Truex Jr. versus William Byron. What's interesting about this, Cole, is that all five of those match bets feature a driver we have discussed in this episode against a driver we have not discussed in this episode, with the exception of Tyler Reddick versus Ryan Blaney. So you've got the other four of Kyle Larson, Bubba Wallace, Christopher Bell, and William Byron, all going up against drivers that we have not necessarily highlighted this week. So obviously, it's not all going to be that easy to predict, but... I think out of the weeks for parlayable bets and match bets, the head-to-head driver bets, this is one of the better ones. I, there's a couple of those that definitely jump off the page to me. Yeah, this is actually a great week for match bets, and I'll keep it real simple here. I like all the favorite drivers in these matchups. So Christopher Bell, William Byron, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Larson, and Bubba Wallace, which equals out to plus 1468. And if you throw $10 on that, you come out with a grand total of $156.00. And 80 cents for a win, which is a really good payout. And I think the, the thing I want to get at here is that these all look good on paper. Um, obviously, they're all favorites for a reason, but you take out like outside circumstances. There, there's been a lot of buzz about the whole Christopher Bell, Daniel Suarez thing from the Roval, which I had not mentioned during my analysis, by the way. That actually is something to keep an eye on because I, I think Christopher Bell did reach out to Daniel Suarez. And he made comments that Daniel Suarez really wasn't happy and he kind of expects some sort of retaliation. And obviously that could happen at Martinsville in a few weeks, but assuming it does happen at Vegas, like we had some retaliation last year with, with um, Kyle Larson and Bubba Wallace, that could definitely um, hurt your day. So if you didn't like Christopher Bell or you felt maybe that Denny Ham would do better than Kyle Larson, you still have guys like William Byron, Bubba Wallace, and Tyler Reddick, who I feel very confident in. And even that's a, a plus 400 um, odd payout for um, $50 and four cents if you threw $10 on it. So I think if you didn't like certain matchups, there's ways to go about it. For me, I think the, the three locks would be Wallace, Byron, and Reddick over their respective matchups for a, a plus 400 um, odds payout. 
All right, Cole, let's talk daily fantasy here because we talked about some really good values just now. Talked about some sleepers even that were good values, including Bubba Wallace, who is a really good anchor uh, for any lineup this week. There's a couple directions you could have taken this, but I personally like the idea of building my lineup around Bubba Wallace. So thinking about that, here is how the, the complexion of our lineup broke out. We went off with, of course, William Byron at 10,600, probably the best favorite and the best driver period out of the favorites category for us. Uh, and then our next most expensive was Tyler Reddick at 10300 So we were able to squeeze in two of our favorites because of how much value there was elsewhere to be uh, picking from this week for the South Point 400. Third most expensive driver was Bubba Wallace at 8600 Then you go down to another one of our favorite values, Alex Bowman at 7700 Eric Almarola, 6900 Justin Haley at 5900 So right there, I just named three drivers out of the four value picks we had this week, all with the exception of Carson Hosever, who you could even fit into an alternate version of this lineup if you wanted to because he's very similarly priced. Uh, we went with more sure things and consistency in the sense of adding Eric Almarola in there, but you could get Carson Hosever for $400 cheaper and upgrade somewhere else potentially. So pick your poison. I feel pretty good about that lineup, though, especially considering the possible ceiling that guys like William Byron, Bubba Wallace, Tyler Reddick, and Alex Bowman have. I feel like all four of those drivers being in the lineup makes me feel pretty good that you could have a race winner in that lineup, potentially. That was perfectly said. I don't think there's much else to say. I think having uh, two HMS guys in there, two 23-11 guys in there, all four, again, with a legitimate shot at the win is a... Uh, a very good tactic and also the I like the way you you um described the approach because kind of how I built my lineups was going with having Bubba Wallace, William Byron, and Alex Bowman in there or some variation of that. If you like Kyle Larson better, you can always do that. But I think um how we both fit it was we, we started with with Bubba Wallace, Alex Bowman, and then kind of went from there with uh, our our ace in the hole. But overall I, I like the sign up a lot as well. It provides a lot of consistency. Um, and again, I don't think there's going to be a lot of room for drivers to, to really sink this one. So um, should be a good day. I like it a lot. Well, let's keep this short and sweet, Cole. Let's take it to the bank. We've discussed a lot here about drivers we like based on the numbers. Uh, of course, they're going to hit the track. And as a reminder, you're going to be there. So uh, just like we talked about the last time you were at the track, which was when uh, the race at Kansas took place, uh, really important developing storylines and insights throughout the weekend that will be important to keep in tune of on social media at the underscore money stop and at your account cole underscore kusamano underscore so with that in mind let's go to our race winner picks here as we have collectively picked a driver that's finished first or second three weeks in a row so the common denominator in a lot of that has been william byron because he has finished first or second three weeks in a row the same three weeks that we've been making this uh, hot stretch over the round of 12 hopefully it carries into the round of eight as such I pick first this week. I'm picking William Byron for the win. I said it the exact same reason I picked him to win at Texas successfully. He's just been so damn good at the mile and a half tracks this year. There's no chance I wasn't going to pick William Byron first. That's the same thing I said about Texas, and he won that race too. So he is uh, adamantly my pick for the win. I uh, I like that pick a lot. For me, my option's got to be the second best, and that's going to be... Um... Kyle Larson, and that also works in my favor because I picked second best at Talladega, and that was Ryan Blaney who got the win. So um, I have a, a very good feeling. I said at, at the top of the show, if it's not William Byron, it's going to be Kyle Larson. I'm standing by that statement. HMS has won um, two of the races at this track uh, in the next gen car. They've been two of the best drivers, uh, Larson and Byron, at the mile and a half this year. And I think that, uh, yeah, I, I think all, all the buzz surrounding the Indy 500 test day the high limit championship, all that stuff's going to amount to a, a Kyle Larson win in Las Vegas. For my sleeper, we're looking at Alex Bowman and down, and I will keep it right there with Alex Bowman for my sleeper. Uh, got the top 10 last week, finished 12th the week prior. You mentioned it has made us look really good, and I think that his stats at Vegas, especially in this next-gen car, speak for themselves. Uh, Alex Bowman, a legitimate sleeper for this win. Yeah, it's a really good pick. I feel like that's kind of a no-brainer, being that he was 15th in the odds. I'm going to take a driver that was out of our value picks as my sleeper for the win, and I don't think he's going to win, but Justin Haley, I think as could he has definitely an outside chance to finish in the top 10. Again, finished eighth here in the spring, uh, had a 13th place average at Vegas in the next-gen car, so I feel pretty good about 
uh, Justin Haley as a, a sleeper this week. And just to tell you, this is a guy that finished top 10 back in the spring. He is valued at plus 2,500 to finish in the top 10 this week. So throw 10 bucks on that, and it nets $250 if he finishes in the top 10 like he did in the spring. So really under the radar value there. And I, I will certainly take Justin Haley uh, as my sleeper this week with William Byron for the win in the South Point 400 at Vegas. Honestly, Cole, one of my favorite tracks. This was one of the first tracks you and I went to when we first got into NASCAR uh, after, of course, Phoenix was our, our introduction. But uh, really exciting anytime we go here. And again, you will be there, so that's even more exciting. But 400 miler at Vegas, two, uh, two o'clock, 2.30 rather, Eastern time is the green flag on Sunday. And it begins the round of eight. Somebody has a chance to punch their ticket into the championship four really getting down to the nitty gritty here. So this is very exciting. Uh, before we sign off, do have to mention on social media, uh, lots of great things happening. We always go through our nickel or dime segment, paint schemes every single week. We love our paint schemes here on the Money Stop, and we like to give them with the money theme, five or 10 out of 10. So check out the graphic at the underscore money stop. Uh, we'll give you our favorite paint schemes and let us know what yours are too. And if you have any uh, questions about any of the paint schemes, we can kind of give you our our analysis of that but that is now uh, on social media that segment but exciting stuff happening can't wait to watch this race at vegas and we hope you can bank out with us we thank you for taking it to the bank we're going to drop the jack here on the money stop he's cole cusimano i am steven cusimano and we will see you next week